Are we excited about the Advent season, the Christmas season? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's a. It's it's a, the you know the the morning of hope, right? This is week one, so it's kind of late this year. But um, jumping into that, our, our obviously our hope candle, and now uh, we just heard a passage about how we treat each other, how we treat our neighbors, and that's a big part of what the City Reaches program is all about. So it's a good time of year for us to be taking this trip. This is my second time doing City Reach. It's Fiona's second time as well. It was Grace's first time. Um, and I'm gonna ask Fiona to come up here in a minute. Uh, and Grace, are you willing to come up as well? Would that be great? Yeah, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, but we didn't get a chance this morning. So I, I'm sorry, I'm springing it on you, but you don't have to, but we would love to have you. Um, I'm just gonna ask a few questions here in a little bit. But the main thing that, uh, if you're wondering what City Reach is all about, I'll just let you know, it's, it's with a program called Common Cathedral, which has been a part of this community for a long time. They've been, par uh, Payson Park has been a partner with them for many, many years. Um, we are gonna be supporting Common Cathedral again when we have the play here in a few weeks. And we might have some guests from Common Cathedral come visit, hopefully. Um, the goal of Common Cathedral is to bridge the gap between the house and the unhoused. It's one of their main uh, goals, and they do that in a variety of ways. But City Reach is a big part where they're bridging that gap between the house and the unhoused. The main way they do that at City Reach is through, they have all these churches come and bring their youth programs to come and hang out downtown with the staff and others who come through the program, uh, many of which are homeless or have or formerly homeless. Um, we had five youth that came. They, um, uh, four of them had come before, um, and one was new. Unfortunately, she had to go home a little early because of she was feeling sick, but we were able to, um, she, she definitely wants to come back, so that's very exciting. And then Grace stepped in as our other adult leader, which was awesome. Um, and she was amazing. You guys give Grace a big pat on the back, and a, yeah, give a round of applause. Because the energy, the enthusiasm, the joy was just, um, was really helpful and infectious and just something we all needed. Um, and so I was very grateful for her. Um, just a little bit of what City Reach does. On Friday night, we show up in a bunch of cars and we unload and it's chaos. And then we do a little debrief or I guess briefing. And, um, and then we go on a little walking tour and go and see a little bit of what it's like to be a homeless person in Boston in December and what you have to do to survive, where you can go, where you sleep. And uh, last year we heard a lot of stories. This year we got to see a lot of sights and actually kind of experience because it was drizzling too. So that kind of adds to it, right? So we went and found dry spots for where people might go sleeping, you know. On, on Saturday, we go to sleep on the floor of the church, which is super fun, because um, it's marble, and if you've never flept, slept on marble, it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't recommend it, but you know, you do what you do. Saturday morning, you get up and uh, you do quick breakfast, but then it's a big hospitality center, and it's all about people coming in and they get food, they get encouragement, conversation, and there's also a lot of all the clothes that you all donated. By the way, I have to give a big shout out to you all for the great stuff that you all donated this year. Um, there was some fantastic uh, coats and, and, and just many of you donated new things. And I was just super happy with, uh, with the generosity that this community continues to show. So anyway, we added that to the pile of what all the different groups brought. And then we sorted it all. We spent a good part of the morning sorting and then distributing to the, uh, the folks that come through. And it's all about the relationships at the end of the day. People need these things to survive and to keep warm, but they also need that connection. And so we're making those connections and that's a big part of what the youth are doing. Uh, and for some of them, it's a very new experience. Um, there's also a hospitality center downstairs. And so after they get some food and they, they go through the, the, the shopping center, you know, then they go downstairs and they can hang out a little bit longer and have further conversations with people. And it's, it's a whole thing and it goes from nine to noon or so and then we do a debriefing at that point. And a part of our debriefing was to make this and all the different groups made a poster board and they, the basic instructions were, write your lessons, what you learned. And we were like, all right. So we started, what we did was, um, and I encourage you all to come up and look and this is what our, uh, the youth wrote down. Um, things that they've learned, things that they saw, but then 
look, there's like branches off where you see examples of things that they saw. So like, and each of these point to concrete stories. So you might see diaper lady here and think, oh gosh, what is that about? There's a story there, right? So um, if Fiona may know the story, I don't, yeah, I don't remember. I think that was, uh, that was Sydney, wasn't it? Yeah, so, I, I, so but, but, but Fiona may have some of the stories. I might have some of them. Grace may have some. So um, be sure to ask if one of them in, interests you. But um, speaking of stories, I'd like to invite Fiona and Grace to come up, if you guys are willing. And we'll quickly just have a few points of conversation, so. So there is Fiona. Make sure everybody's in the frame. Yeah, I have to make sure I'm doing the camera. Yeah, you guys are good. So hi. And uh, yeah, it was uh, Fiona. This was your second time, and maybe just uh, maybe a word about like what was different this time for you. Maybe either maybe some similarities, but also what were what did you notice that was different between this time and last time? And you might want to come up here. For the moment. Okay. Sorry, we might have to shuffle around a little bit. Yeah. So I'd say last time, um, the like mainly the experience was talking to people. Understand it was like the emotional piece. Um, like when we did our walk, it wasn't so much walking around Boston and seeing where to go, but just like talking to the staff and understanding what their life has been like. Um, and then also last time we were assigned with like during the when during a hospitality center part we were assigned to hospitality and back room. So like basically we just talked to people the whole time and showed them where to go and stuff like that. Um, and that was really powerful, but I, this time it was a little bit different. It was much more like practical um, because on the walk that we took, he like the, the staff member who showed us around, his name was Chief, um, showed us, or Daryl, yeah. yeah yes. um, like the places that he had slept and how you stay warm and like the substitute way stations that are safe and the ones that aren't um and so it was it, yeah it was a different experience um but still like really interesting um and you got like a better understanding of what it was actually like and he also really encouraged us to ask him questions so i got to talk with him for a while about his whole life and it was yeah, there were lots of crazy things that have happened, um, but he's still a really great person now. And so that was a cool lesson that I learned. And then during the hospitality center part, instead of just being assigned to talk to people and show them around, we were responsible for shoes, bags, toiletries, and miscellaneous items. Um, so there was a lot to cover. And so it was much more like finding the right size, finding the right item. And that was also super fulfilling because when you found something that worked for the mm -hmm. person, they were super happy. Yeah. So that was really nice. Yeah. Fiona was the shoe expert by the end of the day. We were like, Fiona, what size is this again? Because she memorized all the sizes. Um, Grace, um, this was your first time. And uh, maybe just, maybe what were some of, like, especially during the walk, and maybe learning a little bit more about some, hearing some of the stories that you heard. Uh, what stuck out to you? What was something that you noticed? If you, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, can, um, that, <laughs> so I think uh, one of the things that uh, struck me was that, um, and was that, you know, all of these folks, like they're homeless or like now we call them un unhoused, like you think that to solve the problem, um, so that they have, like, all you have to do is place them in housing, right? That, that seems very reasonable, but it sort of is such a multi-layered issue. It's sort of like solving the issue of poverty. Like, if you just give people money, like, will that solve their problems? Like, no, because it's such a systemic issue. Like, the problem is with, you know, society or, like, with not being able to get the support that they need. Um, and what does that support look like? It's not just like sort of physical needs, it's so many emotional needs. And so I think in talking to many of the uh, homeless folks there, you realize that many of their needs don't stop at housing. For instance, um, I talked to one woman, Wilma, who, who was sort of relaying the story about a woman who had come in and um, she was, she uh, after a very long struggle was able to get housing, but um, left that housing and she would leave it multiple times and why? Um, it was because she was afraid that somebody had stalked her and like, knew where she lived and she just sort of lived in fear, like 
it was clear that there is um, like a mental health and paranoia aspect to this. So like the housing, it's it's sort of like you can give the person housing, but then you need that whole support network for them um, to make sure that they they can sort of succeed and get to where they need. And if you even think about like people, you know, in our maybe like social or economic strata, like those who have mental health issues don't um, like still struggle. And that's with people who have a lot of sort of physical needs that are met. Like what do you do when you have a person who um, maybe had a lot of trauma from like abuse when they were growing up or even somewhat recently, and then they are now are trying to just sort of find their way throughout um, trying to get the needs that you need and um, met and it, it's really challenging. So yeah, some one of the things that I learned, it, it's a hard problem, but I think it can be solved sort of like as we build like relationship by relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that made me think of like three different stories that so maybe afterwards we can share some of the stories, but the idea of um yeah uh, it is a complex issue. We talk about holistic care all the time. We talk about, in, in the church world, we talk about the importance of people's spiritual needs and physical needs and justice needs. And we like to think we can boil problems down to simple solutions. But the genius of City Reach, a lot of ways, is, is starting, the starting point is connection. The starting point is relationships, which is what Jesus teaches us, which is what we see in the Good Samaritan story. It's the point of connection. It's that person-to-person -person contact which doesn't solve the problem. The goal isn't to solve it, but it is to make those connections. And so maybe just, we'll, we'll do one more question is, um, and I'll ask you guys the same question, basically. What was it about City Reach and the connections there and the community that was created there that you noticed and that you want to take away from, from, the, uh, from your experience? Okay, before I answer that question, I just wanted to say quickly, like what Grace was talking about, really like about holistic care really connects to the differences between my experiences. Because like in the first time, it was very much emotional. And then the second time it was, it was still emotional, but also very physical. And so like, having gone multiple times, like I can see the need for both. So that's interesting. That's a good point. Um, and then in terms of like a big takeaway, I think, especially from this time, but combined with my experiences from last time, is that like you hear so many people's stories, so many of their experiences, um, and they're all really different and they've all gone through really different things. But you also end up sort of taking away similar lessons from everybody. And so I felt like this web showed that really well because like although there's lots of different bubbles like the examples sort of overlap um and so that was powerful for me because it showed how like although everybody is really different and comes from really different places and experiences like they all sort of have shared experiences and think that's similar between all of them and that is similar with all of us um and so that is like like connects to the relationship piece as well. Um, like we have things to teach them, they have things to teach us. We're actually not a them and an us, it's like we're all together. Um, and yeah. yeah. I guess uh, one of the big takeaways we have, which I really like that it's kept in this bubble here, just that everyone deserves dignity and that really means everyone. And that I think, um, Corollary to that, like kindness really doesn't cost us that much, mm -hmm. and like sometimes that just appears in very small ways. And like one of the examples I think is that, um, like we we were at the shoe table, and so uh, I never, so I've never worked in a customer facing sort of like. Um, uh, like job, I face test tubes for a day, and I don't. They don't talk back to me, and and I don't have to talk to them. All, all of that, and so, um, so when you're trying to help people like find a shoe that you need, and like we all have preferences, and um, people come and 
there it's clear that sometimes it's just really difficult to like know your size, like pick, pick a shoe that you want, but also that there are other things that they're just sort of dealing with and you can sort of sense that. For instance, like one woman that like Fiona, I really recall very kindly, like helped her get juice like mm -hmm. twice. Like she was just saying like, I don't know if I can take this shoe, it fits, but it's just so heavy. And like, it almost seemed like this big metaphor for like mm -hmm. all of the burdens that she has and has the shoulder like every day, like she has to literally carry a lot with her every day. It's And I felt her bags, they were very heavy. So I understood that that yeah. shoe, it's a nice boot, but like to carry that as well, it's just too much. And you could see how weary she was. And mm -hmm. so like, we could have easily been like, frustrated with her and saying, oh, well, like, you're taking a lot of time at this table, you're taking up the space and like other people need to find these shoes. But I think that sort of like kindness that, um, and like Josh also was helping her like carry her bags out. Um, it cost us nothing. And all we had to do was just sort of say, like recognize that she was in that tough place and say, okay, like, we honor that we understand um, like that you're coming here and like you need something and we can probably help you get that like we have to sort of be open and um and like just love you in the way that we can for this like span of time that we we get to meet you so i think it was sort of um the, one of my takeaways again is like um it costs us nothing to just be kind mm -hmm. we just have to sort of be a little bit more mindful um with every sort of person that we meet no matter who they are so. yeah. Yeah, I love just the idea that kindness costs us nothing. I love that, Grace. And just that's something we can all like, we can just remember that in our daily lives, right? <laughs> um, thank you guys. Um, yeah, well, let's give a hand to you guys. You guys are amazing. I'm so thankful for both of you. Thank you. Um, and just a little, just, just my own reflection, just really fast, um, fits a lot with what Fiona was talking about, about the connection points and the relationships and the fact that we're not all as different as we think we are. Um, one of the refrains that was repeated again and again by the City Reach staff was the idea that my story is bound up in your story and your story is a part of my story. And that as we tell each other's stories, we become more human together. And as we do that, you become a part of my story and it becomes a part of me. And I love that idea. I've always I've loved that idea for a while. It's the notion of Ubuntu. If you've heard of that term before, it's this idea um, that our interconnectedness is very important. And you really see that in a place like City Reach. It may be hard to see in our day to day lives when we're going from thing to thing. Um, but it's one of the things that I think I, is one of the reasons I love doing this kind of thing and 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 getting involved is it's a reminder to me, but also to those who we come with that there's so much that we share in common. And when we're talking about hope this morning, maybe just as a closing thought to say, you know, the hope is found when those, in those connections, the hope is found when we dare to stop and listen and to see the God in each other, to see the Holy Spirit living and acting and moving in the lives of each other. And that is something that we can practice wherever we are it's something that the Good Samaritan practices. It's something that when we're going about our daily lives, we practice um, to see that, that dignity, that, that, that sense of connectedness comes from the spirit of God that connects us all together. And I think when we're in that situation, again, people with very, very different life experiences, um, but this love shines through even when there's pain and there's sometimes emotion to see in that moment uh, to maybe see the human past that to see to not allow that to be the narrative of this person because there's a broader story at work there's a past and with the hope piece we remember that there's a future that hasn't been written yet so may we uh, that's that's something that i'm carrying with me and uh, part of my reflection thank you all so much for your support of City Reach for the help that you provided for the drive, and um, yeah, let's let's go out and find the hope in each other this week. <laughs>